Today, we're going to be talking about aviation, more specifically, aviation in Canada and the struggle with commercial aviation in Canada. So this is a different type of video. Personally, I'm very interested in aviation, so I figured, you know what, let's talk about it. From increasing competition to regulatory hurdles, the Canadian aviation landscape has had its fair share of obstacles, especially in the last few years. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at some of the challenges that the industry has been grappling with and maybe where we're going to go from here. I hope you guys enjoy. First, what we're going to do is talk about the high operating costs within the aviation industry in Canada. One of the significant struggles for commercial aviation in Canada is the very, very high operating cost. Fuel prices, which can be volatile at times, impact airline budgets significantly. Additionally, maintenance expenses, labor costs, such as you know pilot salaries, benefits, this all contributes to the financial burden faced by airlines. The vast size of the country and the need to operate in remote regions with limited infrastructure adds further complexity driving up operational expenses. You know, some of these troubles, like let's say with the, the pilot salaries, look at what just happened with WestJet, right? They barely avoided a massive strike with all their pilots. The Canadian aviation industry simply does not compete with the American, which causes airlines in Canada to not be able to pay their pilots the same way the American pilots get paid. It's it's a very complicated system and it kind of puts the entire industry in a very tough situation. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the limited domestic market. So Canada's domestic market presents its own set of challenges. Canada's population is approximately 38 million people. Think about it in population size comparison. We are the basically the exact same size as the state of California with, well, how much more land do we have than California? A lot more. This means that airlines have to be very careful when they balance supply and demand, particularly on less travel routes. The need to maintain profitability while serving remote, less densely populated areas can be a complex task for airlines operating in Canada. It often requires them to operate smaller aircraft, reduce frequencies, and this affects the overall connectivity and convenience for travelers. And it's even required government intervention in some cases. In the province of Quebec, the Quebec government regulated air travel to remote regions in Quebec and capped the prices of tickets so that airlines couldn't make them too expensive for the people traveling to these remote regions. It's a very tough situation and really there's no one right answer that's going to solve it it's just a reality because of our geography canada is the second biggest country in the world by landmass yet we are one of the least dense populated countries in the entire world so building off that a little we're going to talk about seasonal fluctuations and just geography canada's geography and seasonal fluctuations add even more complexity to the entire aviation industry Extreme weather, particularly during the winter months in most provinces, often disrupt flight schedules and impact operations. Dealing with snowstorms, icy runways, and reduced visibility can lead to delays and cancellations, which obviously affects both passenger travel, airline operations, and even cargo travel. And moving back to geography for a second, there are airports in a lot of different regions of the country that are gravel and can only have a certain type of plane land on it. First comes to mind, Northern Quebec. Air Inuit is the only airline currently that can run up and provide service to some of these remote communities in Quebec because their planes are operated with gravel kits. These are very specific circumstances which add to the complexity of aviation in Canada. Next, let's talk about the regulations. Regulations in the Canadian air airline and aviation industry is, let's say it's a hurdle. Obviously, you got to have all the safety and security protocols in place, environmental regulations that have been added in recent years. There's stuff like that. But then there's also just the taxes and all the extra stuff that just gets piled on and doesn't help the problem, to say the least. There's also strict foreign ownership restrictions that limit opportunities for international carriers to break into the market, which... In turn, when there's, you know, just basic economics, when there are less providers of a certain service, 
the prices are going to go up. And the best example of this, look how many service providers are in the United States for airlines. You have the big three and then you have various other smaller airlines. Canada, what do we have? Can Air Canada, WestJet, those are the two dominant ones, but even WestJet's not even comparable to Air Canada just in terms of fleet size, for example. You have airlines like Porter, and then you sort of move into the low-cost carriers, Flare, Swoop, all those new ones. But there's no competition, if you think about it. it this is in comparison to the United States, of course. With, with these restrictions to foreign ownership and an inability to break into the Canadian aviation market, it's not helping the average consumer. Obviously there are reasons for these restrictions and the rules and stuff like that, but it's still just something that should be talked about and maybe even should be debated on just what can be done to make travel by air more affordable for all Canadians. So then to sort of talk about competition a little more, the competitive landscape within Canada's aviation industry is another area of struggle, as I mentioned. With a limited amount of carriers that just dominate the market, smaller carriers, they have a really hard time breaking in, even to the regional scene. The competitive environment often leads to fair wars and reduced profit margins for airlines, and airlines have struggled immensely in the last few years so the last thing they want to be doing from a business perspective is lowering their fares and reducing their margins finding a balance between affordable fares and sustainable options remains a very big challenge for airlines in canada that's why you see a lot of regional airlines not expanding and some have even shut down in the last few years especially when travel completely went away in 2020 there's been a lot of struggles and doesn't appear that there's a big fix on the horizon. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of, you know, different kind of video. I haven't talked about aviation really at all on the channel, but it's something I'm really interested in and, you know, I love flying, I love going on flights, I love trying out different airlines, but you know what, flying in Canada or flying from Canada to other places is extremely frustrating. There have been times where I've driven across the border into the United States just to get a flight because it's just it's so much cheaper, right? So there needs to be a fix sometime to make it easier for all Canadians. Obviously, you're never going to get something perfect. Like I said before, the geography, how big the country is, we have a small population for the relative size of our country. It'll never be like how it is in the United States. But there's got to be something that can be done to sort of increase connectivity, practicality, and just affordability to the aviation industry. So if you found this video at all helpful, informative, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let's talk about it some more in the comment section. And if you'd like to see more aviation content, I'd be happy to give you some. Um, anything from you know, my thoughts on certain airlines to I could go plane spotting at an airport. Whatever you guys wanna see, I'm willing to do it, so just let me know. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.